You guys did really good the other day, you know, presenting in front of everybody. Oh, thank Very you. Good. You commanded the room. Yeah. That's what DECA is all about. So. Right. <laughs> exactly. You're listening to MPS Connection with AJ Hoffman. Perfect. Hello, friends. Welcome to the MPS Connections. I'm your host, AJ Hoffman. I am joined today by some students from the Dow High uh, DECA Club. Uh, guys, you want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, so my name is Alex Price. I am a senior at Dow High, and I'm the president of Dow High DECA. Hi, I'm James Toole. I am a senior at Dow High, and I'm the vice president of competitive events at Dow High DECA. And I'm Danny Safadi. I'm a senior at Dow High, and I'm the vice president of fundraising at Dow High DECA. Awesome, awesome. Okay, I'm not sure who wants to get started, but what is, so what is DECA? I can take that one. So. Honestly, that's probably the hardest question that we get as officers because there isn't really one definition that describes all of DECA. So what we usually tell new members or parents inquiring about DECA is that it's a competitive business club. And that doesn't really explain a whole lot about what DECA is, but it's basically split up into three categories, which are role play events, written events, and virtual events. So role play events are when students uh, receive a case study and then have to solve that problem and present it in front of a judge. And then written events are when students receive a problem or make their own business plan months in advance and then get to present it. And then virtual events are practically vir virtual business challenges. So kind of like I said, there's just not really a blanket statement that can cover all of DECA because there just is something for everyone. So Yeah. What does DECA stand for? Put you on the spot. Distributive Education Clubs of America. Oh, nice. It really doesn't mean much. Though. No, it yeah. does not make any sense. <laughs> Is there, and you might not know the answer to this one, it's an unscripted question. What's the difference between DECA and BPA? So, it's kind of hard to explain, but BPA, when, when looking at the role play events, so 80% of our or 80% or so of our members compete in what we call role play events, so like the case study things. And that's kind of similar to the BPA one, but they also kind of combine written events too. So I'm pretty sure BPA students, they get to prepare for months in advance and present kind of like a trifold presentation to uh, a judge. And then, but they, but like 10 minutes before they compete, they receive it, like a switch or an issue to their presentation, and then they have to fix that and then present it all in front of a judge. So I think it differentiates a little bit, but it kind of combines the aspect of the role play events and the written events together in DECA. That makes sense, because I, I remember when I was doing DECA, everything was kind of on the spot. You were right. kind of given the situation, had maybe an hour to prepare, maybe half an hour or an hour. It's, it's uh, is it 10 for individual and then 30 for uh, That's right. events. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, you're, it's kind of spur of the moment. You're really put on the spot, for sure. It's a nerve-wracking experience, too, if you don't, you know, much more nerve-wracking than doing a podcast in a, you know, for your school district, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. How many, or how and why did each of you want to get involved in the group? Um, well, personally, I joined DECA um, because of the people around me and um, also kind of my, just in general, little bit of interest in business at the time. Um, Ms. Roti, she teaches a, she's the advisor for our DECA club, and uh, she teaches a marketing and uh, extensive business classes at Dow, and um, so I wanted to take this marketing class, and uh, kind of as a part of that, I had been hearing about DECA. Um, I actually joined as a junior, um, just last year was my first year in DECA, but um, I'd been hearing about it since my freshman year from my friends and uh, classmates, and so... Um, everyone being, again, DECA has a lot of hype, I feel like, at Dow, so uh, with everyone talking about it and me already taking a business class, uh, it kind of just seemed to make sense um, to put myself in a spot to where I could compete against other people as uh, I like to win, and so um, having a competition to like strive to do better every time, um, it was something that I really wanted to be a part of. How about you, Danny? I joined my sophomore year, which was uh, the COVID year, so it was, it was a tough <laughs> year, but freshman year I heard a lot about DECA, I had friends in DECA, and that kind of like prompted me to join sophomore year. I was already thinking about it freshman year, but I wasn't completely sure, so I decided not to. Uh, sophomore year was mostly online because of everything going on, so it wasn't the same experience, but I still had a good time, and I enjoyed the competition aspect. And then last year I really uh, enjoyed the other aspects of it, like going with the group to uh, different competitions around the state, 
and uh, I thought it was just a great time, so I don't regret joining at all, and I know most members have the same belief about them. How about you, Alex? Um, so I joined my freshman I joined my freshman year, and my mom actually forced me to join. I, I had no interest in DECA whatsoever. I hated business, really hated everything that it entailed. I was so shy, did not like public speaking at all, or speaking to a, spra a stranger especially. So I did join, and I joined in a partner event, so that made me a little bit less scared. But then after, I kind of got over the fear of talking to a stranger because I realized like you're never going to see the judge again. It really does not matter how you perform. Right. And then so I kind of succeeded my freshman year, made it to states, really did not expect that. And then COVID hit, so I was virtual, but I ended up qualifying for internationals while online. So I thought that was a pretty great experience, and I was like, oh, I'm kind of actually good at this. <laughs> and then I kept doing it. My junior year became a marketing officer, and then I'm here today as president. So I kind of just share the message to all the members. Like, it really does not matter how you perform, because um, you can end up building so many social skills from this club, and it's just, it's just really only beneficial. Nice. I want to get into some of your more personal stories about competition and stuff in a little bit, but educationally, uh, what do you think are some of the benefits a student can gain from being a part of DECA? Well, um, so a lot of the skills that come from DECA are kind of basic to uh, anywhere you go in life, which is why I think it attracts a lot of people as well. Um, it's a business club, but it doesn't necessarily have to be about business. Um, there's so many different um, like events and different ways you can participate in DECA that uh, no matter what you do, uh, whether you're practicing the actual business aspect, um, knowing things about business, knowing how people think, that kind of thing, um, whether you're doing that or whether you are just practicing being able to speak um, and like think critically uh, in a tight jam or something like that, um, it, it really just helps you build those basic like creative thinking, critical thinking, um, and being able to speak in front of people. Like one of the things that uh, we always kind of joke around with at uh, DECA meetings is without DECA, we would not be able to stand up here and talk to you confidently, um, presenting this PowerPoint or even talking here on this podcast. Like being able to talk like this um, as, like, as a freshman, I would have never been able to do. Um, and I think DECA has helped me refine those skills um, and just make me more comfortable in like stressful settings where maybe I'm a little nervous. Absolutely. You kind of answered my next question there, James, you know, um, which is, a, I guess I'm, I'm always impressed when I see young people standing up and, and giving a presentation and doing it really well, like you guys did the other day. I, you know, people, your peers, and this is not a knock on them, but it's, it's just a generational thing. They don't like to talk on the phone. They don't like to talk to each other. It's, you know, just... Can we text you the information or <laughs> yeah. we email it to you? And you guys handled it really, really well. So socially, maybe you could go, one of you guys can go into depth a little bit more about it. Yeah, I can. So, um, like, James and I both play soccer, and our soccer coach always harps on how uh, our kids our generation don't know how to talk to each other. We just right. text, and we lost all the social aspects or social skills that we need. But I think DECA really helps us socially and uh, just builds confidence for, like, certain stressful events that James was talking about. Uh, it also, like, uh, I found it helps with, like, interview skills as well. Because those are skills that probably, everyone's going to have an interview in their life at some point. And those are skills that you just need to have, be able to, like, uh, calm down and answer, like, when you're put in a stressful situation. I think Decker really helps with that. But it also helps just articulating your thoughts. Like, in uh, when you're just talking with someone or having a conversation, uh, you can articulate your thoughts better, expand your vocabulary, and it's just really useful in all social aspects. Yeah. Are any of you guys working right now or no? I am, yeah. No, I have a, yes, I'm employed. <laughs> okay, what do, you, what do you do right now if you don't mind? Um, I work at the community center as a volleyball coach and a volleyball ref. Okay. So, yeah. Do you, have you noticed the skills you've developed in DECA kind of coming into play at work? Oh, for sure. I'm able to talk to like my bosses more confidently and I feel like I'm just able to talk to really any strangers, whether they're you know, people from another team on the court. I'm really just able to talk to anyone and, you know, in any setting. Yeah. So I feel like that's helped a lot. How about you, James? Um, I work at Taco Bell, and um, I, I would say that I, I do see some of the skills coming into play, maybe not as much necessarily um, as even other aspects of my life, but um, I definitely, as Alex said, I'm more comfortable talking to, like, my managers um, and people above me for sure. Um, and also uh, the same thing with how Alex talked about the judges previously, like 
most of these customers that I'm dealing with, I will never see again. Um, and if I do, it will be uh, weeks from now or, or however long it is. And so, like, understanding that, it makes me more confident in what I'm talking about um, and can help me deal with stressful situations. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a job, but, like, just thinking of uh, examples of how it's, like, helped my social skills, one of the things I have to do since I'm, like, the fundraising officer is uh, call local businesses and ask for, like, donations or sponsorships. I think uh, before, maybe a couple of years ago, even last year, I wouldn't feel confident to just call someone on the phone, someone I've never talked to before, and talk to them. But uh, I think Decker really helped me with, like, building confidence for that. And as I went on that process, calling probably 50-so businesses in Midland, uh, I just really gained the confidence to present to them clearly and uh, explain what we needed and ask if they were willing to donate. And it was just a helpful process for that. That's a huge thing too. I noticed that when I was when I was in the group, it was um, we'd sell coupon books, and uh, I went door to door in my neighborhood, and I probably never talked to a lot of those neighbors before in my life. But it, it really, it, I did it by myself, and it kind of I was pushing myself into the water to kind of sink or swim, and and figure out how to do that, and figure out how to sell, and and all that. But yeah, it's I, I think you're <clears throat> all three of you are right. As far as, you know, the talking and social acumen, it really builds that up, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Talk to me about competition. What, what's, what's involved at each level? So there are three main levels of competition that um, DECA members can compete at. So first off is the district level, and the district competition is for every single Dow High DECA member to attend uh, with the exemption of written and virtual events, but it's for all people who are participating in role plays. And so typically we go to SVSU and people complete a role play, whether it's partner or individual. So like I said before, individual events will get 10 minutes to prepare and then partner events will get 30 minutes to prepare. And then they'll go into a room with the judge and get 15 minutes to present. And then I believe, is it the top six from each make it? I think, I think so. that sounds pretty Yeah, good. it's like the top six from each event make it onto the state level. And then from states, states is in Detroit, and that's usually, what, like 90% of our members make it? I would say about 90%. Yeah, yeah, wow. so it's a pretty large percentage. Last year we took over 90 members to states in Detroit, yeah, yeah. so that was a lot to handle, but <laughs> it, was, it was pretty fun. Um, so at the state level, we'll stay in Detroit for roughly three days. Um, in March, and members will compete usually two role plays then, depending on you know the amount of judges that are available, and that will be when written events present as well. So if there are people who are dual in, who, are, who do dual events, which are role play events, and then they also have one in written events, they'll both present there, and then the top six from each event again will make it on to internationals. So internationals last year was in Atlanta, Georgia, and we had 13 members make it there. So 10% of our club, which wow. wasn't that bad. That's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, 13 members made it on, and that was a really great experience for everyone. We got to spend the whole week in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, it was really an amazing time. And then this year, internationals will be in Orlando, Florida. So okay. yeah, excited yeah. for that. No wonder why you had such a big crew for. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We talked about it a little bit before. Can you kind of talk to me about the preparation process for competition beforehand? I know there's, it sounds like there's a lot of work that goes into to it before you guys go into uh, like regionals or states or anything like that. Yeah, so um, obviously we can't force our members uh, to really do anything that they don't want to take a part in as uh, we always talk about how you get out of DECA what you put into it. Um, so we try to encourage all our members to take part in um, the many different ways that we provide practice to them. Um, so uh, another big part of DECA is the DECA testing. So uh, in order to move on to the next level, uh, they take your role play scores uh, and they average it with your testing scores. So you'll take a, a test um, a couple weeks prior to um, your competition uh, for districts and then um, at states you would, uh, you would participate in the test there. Um, but anyways, they, they have these kind of clusters for your testing, um, depending on what event you were in for your role plays. And so you'll take a test and they'll average those scores out. Um, and so obviously we want to make sure that our members know what they're doing and they're prepared, especially for first years um, who are asking what DECA is. And we, it's hard to give them an answer. Uh, and so the best way is to show them. 
Um, so we provide a lot of opportunities um, through um, online files and uh, in-school practice sessions to allow for students to come in um, and take practice tests or um, participate in Jeopardy sessions uh, and tips and tricks guides. Um, and then also practice role play sessions where an officer uh, will give them a practice case study and they can practice using that um, role play, those role play skills um, in that moment to prepare themselves for the later competitions. And like, like James was saying, like uh, we give our DECA members all the opportunities they need to succeed. We give them so many different resources, but it's the ones who really want to succeed and who enjoy DECA and want to make it to the farther rounds that uh, take advantage of these resources and uh, use them to the best of their abilities to try to make it to the next round. So it's the motivated members that, make, that do the best. Understandable. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. How many students really take it seriously? How many students take that piece seriously, the preparation part? I think that we've had an increase in that number. Um, it's hard to give an exact number, especially because um, this year we've implemented some rules to kind of try to push them and force them to take advantage of that. Uh, for example, um, the rule that we implemented this year was uh, you have to participate in a practice role play session um, because again uh, we have 170 plus members this year uh, over a 50 increase from last year and so when we see an increase in numbers like that we know that the quality is probably not going to be as great and so we really want to increase the quality of our club uh, as well as the quantity um, and in order to do that we want to make sure that we're pushing them to do their best uh, and again, so we implemented a um, role play session rule where you have to participate in a practice role play in order to attend districts. Uh, and then also a rule that if you um, did not receive a 65% or higher on your um, that district test that you would not be able to attend states even if you qualified um, at the district level. Um, and again, the reason we did this is because uh, it cuts out that small percentage of DECA members um, that maybe didn't apply themselves as well or wanted to just scrape by to get to the next level. Um, and we, it's kind of to help push everybody to put that little bit of effort that um, as capable members we know that if they put in that, again, that little bit of effort that they can easily move on to the next level. Yeah. Alex kind of talked about her story before. She didn't really like it going in. Mm -hmm. You felt like you were forced into yeah. going into DECA. And then you started doing it and you're like, well, I'm actually really good at this. So, James and Danny, could you guys kind of talk about your experience for it? Well, what, how did it play out for you guys? I think for me it was more of like a steady growth, I'd say. It wasn't like a dramatic, oh, I'm, I'm really good at this right away. I, the first time I did a practice role play, I know I did really bad at it. It was with uh, one of the officers. And I know it wasn't my best, but I just stuck with it. And uh, sophomore year, I qualified for states, uh, which was also virtual. So it was, it was a big experience for that, too. But that year I really felt like I slowly increased my uh, interpersonal skills and just got better at presenting in front of the judge. And then uh, last year, I also thought I did pretty good. Uh, I didn't make it to internationals like uh, both Alex and James did last year, so I'm, I'm the outcast, I guess. But, um, maybe I thought, this year. Maybe this year. Maybe this year, yeah. But I thought I did pretty well last year also. Um, just kept building on my skills, working on them. And hopefully this year we got more to come, so we'll see. Good. Can, can each of you kind of share some of your personal stories in competition or time that like maybe it didn't go the way you wanted it to go? Yeah, from that. yeah. so um, my deck experience has kind of been a little weird. Um, as I stated earlier, uh, last year as a, as a junior it was my first year in DECA and um, I had a partner, uh, I was a partner event for sports and entertainment marketing which uh, a lot of people will tell you is a uh, kind of easy category um, but there's a lot of competition because uh, it's very easy to uh, do very well. And so when you're competing against a lot of people who are good at their category, it can make it a lot uh, more difficult. But uh, I was participating in a partner event with uh, my partner was Isaac Skinner. And um, uh, we were, we, we, <laughs> well, well, so. It was all his fault, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, well, yes, but actually <laughs> it turns kidding, out to be, uh, it turns out to be a good thing. Um, basically, we've been prepping. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, so we've been working together, really prepping for this. Uh, and as a first year DECA member, um, I didn't really know what I was doing, uh, but he did because he had participated the previous year, and also his older brother Logan Skinner um, was very successful in DECA. And so, uh, from what I know, Logan kind of taught him what he knew, and then he kind of taught me what I know. 
Um, and obviously I've, I've moved on from that and improved since what he's told me, but he kind of passed on the basic deck information that I needed to know in order to uh, achieve what I wanted. Um, and so uh, I give him a lot of props for that. Uh, but basically, we, we've been practicing. We participated in Northwood Deck a Day, a good practice session. Uh, we competed at districts and had a really good role play. Um, and we did pretty well on our tests, and we both qualified for states. Um, then we went down to Detroit, uh, and he was not with me because he had, uh, as part of the Dow High hockey team, they had qualified for the state semifinals, which was also in Detroit. So he was hoping to possibly um, go to this, the hockey game and then make it back across <laughs> Detroit to participate in the uh, state um, DECA competition. Uh, but he texted me about, I want to say an hour, maybe, I want to say maybe 30 minutes before we were supposed to compete on that day. And he said, the game before us that we're waiting to get on the ice, it's in triple overtime. And so they hadn't even started and I was about to sp go compete with him. And so uh, luckily Miss Royalty uh, had acted very quickly and she actually transferred me to a different event to uh, participate in solo. Um, it was still sports and entertainment um, marketing, but again, uh, I'd only ever done this with him. And so, uh, you know, 10 minutes before I was supposed to be down there, Miss Royalty calls me, I'm in my hotel room. She goes, James, I just switched your event. I need you to get down here, you have 20 minutes. And so, um, we, at the time, we are about a mile away from the convention center, and so I get on the elevator, I'm getting down there, I'm running in the snow to the convention center, I'm trying to get there in time. Uh, and I got there, and then, I'm, and then I end up just sitting in this convention center in my suit, all nervous, because I'd never done this before by myself, and I was like, gosh, why couldn't he just have come and made it? Um, but it, it was actually uh, kind of a, a spark of, uh, pressure that was good because I think it pushed me to uh, try to make it to the next level because as a dual of as a partner event switching to a solo 20 minutes before competition I think it kind of gave maybe the impression that I wouldn't do well um, and after talking to Miss Royalty she's like oh you'll do fine which obviously she's gonna say um, but I think it kind of pushed me to work really hard and uh, try to do my best maybe even better than I would have done if Isaac had been there um, and uh, Made, whether it was luck, whether it was skill, whatever, um, it actually ended up allowing me to qualify for ICDC, uh, the international competition. And uh, so that was a really stressful time, um, but it, it kind of makes it uh, a little bit better because um, it's kind of a, a weird experience that a lot of people won't have. It makes for a great story, too. Yeah, I know. You should have had Isaac just show up in his jersey and hockey <laughs> pads and all sweaty. He was going to. He was going to. Yeah. How about you, Danny? Any oh, experience? my experience is not nearly as good as James. That was a great story there. Yeah, uh, just personal experiences in general. Like uh, I've had many different judges, as as you see in your DECA career. You get many types of judges, and uh, I found the ones they're not supposed to actually give you any visual cues when you're presenting, but I find the ones that uh, give you nods and like some smiles here and there. It really helps me when I'm competing because I just I guess I respond better to that positive reinforcement, but. Uh, the ones that are stone-faced, you can't tell whether or not you're doing well. And then afterwards, when you see your scores, like, oh, I guess I did do pretty well, but you can't really tell from their face. I don't have any crazy stories about switching from a partner event to an individual event. <laughs> Sorry, she was last. Because <laughs> the hockey team made this, won the state championship. Yeah. What about you, Alex? Oh, yeah, I really don't have any crazy stories like James, but... She just knocked it out of the park every yeah. single time, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, no. no, well, I have to say, internationals last year, I do have one story that, like, knocked me down probably 30 points because, um, well, you were supposed to enter the... What they have after you do your 10 minutes of preparation, you go into almost, like, these aisles, and they have booths on each side for competition. And what you're supposed to do when you enter in the aisle is you're supposed to keep your head straight forward. And me, I'm a very social person, so I just like waved to the judge and I was like, oh my gosh, like, hi, how are you? <laughs> and then I got my sheet back and it was it was an awful score because of that. And apparently it was illegal and I got knocked oh. down a ton of points, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, you never know what you're going to get judged on oh, yeah, and stuff. I know, oh. he was not happy with it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys have anything else you'd like to add or any kind of messages to get the, the word out about DECA a little bit more? Um, I'd like to talk about how um, DECA is seen as a competitive business club. Obviously, it's a school club. Um, and again, we travel competing, whether district, state, international level. Like You travel all around. Um, I think a huge part of DECA 
is the social aspect. Um, that's not competing. Um, again, like whether it's your uh, club in itself or meeting other people, um, you can meet so many different people uh, and talk to different people and learn new things and that kind of thing. And also just have fun with your friends. I think that's definitely a huge attraction to um, Dao Hai Deca is uh, obviously we advertise the pluses of uh, competition, but also it just provides good experiences with your friends in high school. Um, I, for example, uh, when Alex and I attended ICDC, like we were there for a week and uh, competition you don't compete for a week, it's like three days maybe. And so we have this time that, uh, to spend in Atlanta, Georgia and go to things like um, the aquarium or the world of coke. Um, and these kind of things are experiences that not everyone can have. Um, and as a high schooler on a school field trip, um, getting to like experiences, uh, getting to experience these experiences, uh, it can be really amazing uh, and, a, and a lot of fun. Yeah, I feel like a common misconception is that DECA is just this huge time commitment and it's all, you know, competition, competition, competition. But kind of like James said, we did like two days of competition all the whole week that we were in Atlanta, Georgia. At States, you only do one day of competition. Um, DECA is known for its famous game night, which students uh, participate in games along with the teachers. And it's really just a great time overall. Um, but we kind of preach you get out of it what you put into it. You'll be really, really successful if you put a lot of time into this club. But almost, you know, half or all of our all of our members in DECA are participating in, you know, varsity sports, tons of other clubs. You know, you can always make time for DECA, and it's not really this huge commitment that people kind of say it is. And like James said, it's really just a social club, and you can meet so many new friends. You know, we met people from all around the world at Atlanta, Georgia, and it was really just a great opportunity. So I really think that everyone should join DECA. Whether you're into business or not into business, you'll end up using these skills sometimes in your life. And anyone can be a part of it, right? It's, oh, yeah, not for a, sure. No. There's no cut or limit or anything nope. like that. Okay. And uh, one of the other things that we offer is for first members, you can participate in a um, principals event, which allows for you to only compete against other first year DECA members. So uh, kind of offering that to first year members, it allows for um, people who are maybe less as confident or just freshmen being nervous uh, to kind of enter the club that way. Um, so they can kind of trial and error without maybe taking a full deep dive into the club. Um, and I think that's another thing that kind of encourages people to just join and take it, you know, try it. If you don't like it, don't come back. Although I think we have a, a very large percentage of uh, returning members every year. Right. Yeah, like Alex was mentioning also, even though it's considered a business club, uh, you don't need to be interested, like super interested in business in, or, in order to do it. Like for example, uh, one of our former presidents last year, he's majoring in engineering now at Michigan State and he's doing great there. So it just helps you build skills necessary for anything you want to go into, not just business. And I think uh, that's a common misconception for people who aren't in the club. And building off what James said, the social skill, the social aspect of DECA, I, I think without a doubt, it's one of my most fun activities I've been in high school. Uh, DECA States last year in Detroit was one of the most fun high school experiences I think I've had. Not just being able to spend time with my friends, but being able to meet new people like they mentioned. Uh, I met a ton of people from other schools, became friends with them over the course of the weekend. It was just two or three days too. You meet people, you become friends with them, you add them on social media, and yeah. you stay in touch too. It's just a nice experience to get to see different perspectives and different uh, points of view from other schools all around Michigan and like them all around the country and even the world. People from uh, everywhere, so it's just a great experience. It's kind of a good networking, networking experience. For sure. Yeah, I don't think you have to be in, uh, particularly interested in business, but it helps. I mean, it does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you Definitely. know, it really helps if you take a business class too, just because a lot of the topics will overlap right. with what we're learning. So we're all in IB business, and that has helped a lot with you know like the charts that we can create when presenting, and it really just enhances our presentations overall. So you know, we recommend that students take a business class, but it's really not required. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think that's it. That wraps up our show. I'm going to do a quick closing and we'll call it a day. Um, we'd like to thank all of our listeners around the district, around the country, and around the world for tuning in. We just launched our Instagram page for Midland Public Schools. You can follow us at Midland Public Schools. Uh, if you have a story suggestion, you can email us at communications at midlandps.org. That's communications at midlandps.org. Thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you in two weeks. We hope you enjoyed this episode of MPS Connections. 
we release new content on the first and third Thursday of almost every month. Do you have an idea for a podcast or other content from around this district? Send it to communicationmidlandps.org. Thanks.